In this video we're going to look at the Legendre test now. The idea behind this is that if we were to work out the Euler Lagrange and we find out that we have a stationary point, but we're not able to tell whether the stationary point is actually a, a maximum or a minimum, then we'd have to look at the second variation and, and the sign of the second variation will tell us whether the, um, the stationary point is a maximum or a minimum. So if the sign of the second variation is uh, less than zero, we'll have a the stationary point will be a maximum. And if the sign of the second variation is greater than zero, the stationary point will be a minimum. But this is a difficult equation to handle here. Okay, so um, we're able to say via the Legendre test that the sign of this whole equation here is determined by the sign of this particular part of it here, the partial squared f upon partial y derivative squared, okay? So we're saying that <coughs> this part of this equation dominates the rest of this equation here, okay? So we no, won't get any proof of that. We don't wait, get any proof of that until the second chapter, until we look at the Jacobi test and uh, look at conjugate points, okay? So the test really has three stipulations. One, that there is a stationary point, which is really just that the oil of Lagrange is satisfied. And secondly, that uh, on the interval AB, the interval AB is sufficiently small. Okay, so the interval, interval for integration there is sufficiently small. But what do we mean by sufficiently small? Well, again, we get into that when we look at the Jacobi test and conjugate points in the, uh, the next chapter. So point three is that partial squared F upon partial y derivative squared does not change sign, so it remains just uh, one, either positive or negative, over uh, the, the interval AB. So if this is the case, then it means that our stationary point will be a maximum if partial squared f upon partial y derivative squared is less than zero, and it will be a minimum if partial squared f upon partial y derivative squared is greater than zero. Now again, we've not gone through the proof of that until uh, a, a for a, a few videos yet, okay? But just as a motivation, what we're really saying is that imagine that we had a, a function here, um, t of x, and we were to um, look at the, the t derivative of x here, okay? So the straight line there is the t derivative of x. And we're to pick a point there, a, and then our other point there, b, well, our other point there, b, can range along this axis, okay? So it could be anywhere along the axis, that's the upper bound, the upper point there, and all the way along that axis. So then we're able to say that um, the if we were to look at the upper bound of the the gradient of the derivative, then the upper bound of the gradient of the derivative uh, in that interval there a to x is going to be that point there m. Okay, so it means that we can say that m times well that distance there, which is just your um, x minus a will always be greater than or equal to the value of t of x, okay? Now, you can see how that's kind of going to work. If you um, were to think about, let's say, the, the value m, for which is the upper bound of the uh, derivative, let's say it actually occurred at that point, okay? So if it occurred at that point, then all we would really have would be um, the the gradient of that point there times this distance, okay, which would be our normal kind of first um, order approximation, Taylor approximation there for that height there, okay. Now, if we were then to say that that point there, uh, the, the, the maximum value doesn't occur at that point, okay, the maximum value is actually a lot, lot bigger, okay, so it's actually up here and it's a lot bigger, then it means that this m times the uh, a delta x is actually, the m times this distance here, is actually going to be a point much further up here, okay? And it's going to be up further up above the actual value of t, the t of x, okay? So that's really what we're saying there. Um, and then if we assume we're going to make that uh, distance there uh, very, very small, okay? Then we can say that um, our uh, t of x is going to be much smaller than that value of t derivative of x, okay? So it means really from what we're saying there that this term here is going to
dominate uh, over any of these terms here okay so this uh, t derivative squared is going to dominate which is the coefficient of this partial squared f of one partial y derivative squared okay so it means that that's the, that that does dominate uh, and that determines whether the value of the uh, second variation is going to be a positive or a negative thing. okay thank you for listening and if you enjoyed this video then please don't forget to subscribe okay goodbye